Hello. In this video, I'm going to provide a short demonstration of binary logistic regression in STATA using the FIRTH procedure. Before we get started, let me just note that the text file that I have open on my screen will be made available for download underneath the video description. And in this file, uh, it contains an overview of the FIRTH procedure, packages to install, uh, the example itself in terms of uh, the scenario and so forth, uh, the commands that we will be using, and then also links to articles that were kind of referenced above. So let's go ahead and get started. The FIRTH procedure can be used with smaller data sets and data sets that are sparse, that is, low frequency counts within certain categories. This procedure can also be utilized in larger data sets where complete or quasi-separation is a problem. Separation occurs when the predictor or predictors in a model create perfect or near-perfect separation between groups on the dependent variable. And this problem emerges often in rare event studies. This method adjusts maximum likelihood estimates to decrease bias and regression parameters and provides an approach to estimating finite model parameters when separation is a problem. So the packages that we need to install are Firth Logit and Firth Fit. And these are not; these do not come standard with uh, Stata, or at least not with the version that I have. So I need to uh, install these in order to run my analyses. Now, actually, I I have already installed them, but I'm going to walk you through the steps, and it's pretty simple. Well, what we're going to do is go down to the command line at the bottom, and we're going to use the search function in order to to uh, find those packets. So I'm going to type in search, and then find uh, Firth. Logit. So that's the first one that we want to install. I'm going to hit enter here and you can see that it says Firth Logit and we'll click right here to install that package. Next we'll do the same thing with Firth Fit. So we'll type in search Firth Fit enter and now it shows up. So we'll click on this and click here to install and then we are good to go. So now what we need to do is to go through the example and we'll use the commands. The commands are basically Firth Logit and Firth Fit. So we'll walk through those in a second. So for our demonstration, we are modeling predictors of the likelihood of early termination from counseling based on data from 45 clients. The predictors are gender identification, coded zero is male identified, one is female identified, symptom severity, and then scores on a measure of avoidance of disclosure. The dependent variable, which is uh, early termination, is coded zero, did not terminate early, and one did terminate early from treatment. Now, I already have the data set open, and so these are the variables that are included in the data set. So we're not going to be using the year variable, but everything else. And we're going to be starting off with the first logit command, and following that, we're going to type in the name of the dependent variable and then the names of the predictors. Um, and then following that, we can also ask for, we can call up Firth Fit, which Firth Fit just contains some additional measures of fit that you might be interested in. But the primary analysis is going to be uh, using this set of commands right here. So let's go ahead and do this. So I'm going to go down to the command line, and I'm going to type in Firth Logit. And then I can type in the name of the dependent variable, which is ET, because that's actually the name in the data set, and then the names of the, the uh, predictors in the model. And s instead of typing all this out, I'm going to actually go up here to the right and just uh, type the little arrow right here, or click the little arrow right here, and move those variables over. So now you can see I've got avoidance of disclosure, symptom severity, and gender ID included. Next, we'll hit Enter, and it runs our basic model. So looking at our output, you can see it says penalized log likelihood. That's, a, that's it right here. And we also have kind of our overall model fit um, um, measures kind of over here where we can look at uh, the walled chi-square uh, test in order to determine if our model fits significantly uh, better than a null or unconditional model with no predictors. So you can see this is the chi-square value and our p-value that's given right here. So using a conventional 0.05 threshold, we would reject the null hypothesis um, and infer that our model represents a significant improvement in fit over a null or unconditional model. Next, let's look at the individual predictors. We have avoidance of disclosure, which has a positive regression coefficient, and 
this is our p-value, and you can see that it's indicating statistical significance. So basically what this is telling us is that uh, clients who were more avoidant of disclosure were more likely to terminate early than those who were less, uh, li less avoidant in terms of dis disclosure. Then we have symptom severity, and there's a negative coefficient right here, and our p-value is indicating statistical significance. So basically what that's telling us is that clients with uh, greater symptom severity were less likely to terminate early. Then we have gender ID, and you can see we have a negative coefficient here, but our p-value is indicating non-significance. So basically what this is all telling us is that overall the model fits significantly better than a null model, and the best predictors within the model are avoidance of disclosure and symptom severity, where basically individuals who were more avoidant of disclosure uh, were more likely to terminate early, and those with greater symptom severity were less likely to terminate early. Okay, so now let's really quickly, we'll just type in the firth fit command and hit enter. And so there you go. And so just looking at this, you can see that we get um, you know, our information criteria. There's the AIC, BIC, and then we have pseudo R square values that are given as well. So you can see there's Cox and Snell. Um, you can see there's McFadden's and so forth. So that um, really pretty well concludes this demonstration, and I hope you found this video useful. And thanks for watching.